Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here and thanks to the Krug Tribe for providing this wonderful facility for our meeting tonight. And it gives me pleasure to introduce Kenneth Brink, the Tribal Vice Chair, and he's going to start off our, our meeting tonight. Ayuki Kowuda, hello, how's everybody doing? Welcome to Kaduk Country. I want to go ahead and correct everybody. Kaduk is pronounced with a silent R. So it's not Karuk, it's Kaduk. So just to get that straight, you know, Kaduk means upriver in our tribe. And everybody, welcome to the Kaduk Country. You know, welcome to our new, newly remodeled facility here. And I just want to thank everybody and all the agencies that are here doing this wonderful job on this fire. This fire is, uh, reminds me a lot of the Yeti fire last year or the year before, whenever it happened. Um, you know, it's a really slow moving fire. It takes a long time to do a great understory burn. A fire like these, um, is, you know, what the Kodak tribe used to do. We used to do large scale fires like this. Traditionally, we'd have burns going like this in our tribe. You know, we utilize lightning when it happens, you know, and we wouldn't let the understory get to where it is now, but, you know, we'd have slow moving fires and the understory takes, you know, a lot of time. It just doesn't happen in a week or two. It takes months. So this, this fire was a part of our culture and uh, it was our way of life. It was our main tool. Mother Nature gave us the fire and we utilize it to our best advantage, you know, and along comes like, Smokey the Bear has a different story about it. And everybody got scared about fire. So we start putting out every lightning strike we could ever, you know, happen, you know, it's like, so we moved to suppression. So the cut of people were stripped of their way of life. We, uh, we, we weren't allowed to do what we did culturally and traditionally and, you know, ceremonially. So, and fire was our tool. We weren't allowed to burn. We took away a lot of our tools. And now look how the forest is. Look at the way it's managed now. And, you know, take a look out the door. You can see the devastation. When settlers first came here, it was quite a bit different story. It was the biggest trees, the most beautiful streams, the most fish in the river you can ever dream of. It was literally like an ecotopia for, on earth here. And it was managed by the cut of people, you know, the creator gave us the brain, showed us upright to be the managers, not the desecrators. We're here to manage the land. So when we manage, we take care, we took in consideration everything. We just don't manage for gold, or we just don't manage for timber, or we just don't manage the fire now. So, Kodok people manage for that little bug that walked there, the air we breathe, and everything in between. We, our management for was from the top of the mountain to the ocean. You know, that's just what we did in the way of life. And, uh, you know, we have some management coming back now. It's like we're starting to re realize that the old, we have a term now, finally, we have an acronym, TEC, Traditional Ecological Knowledge. And it's something that's really come into play now that people realize that maybe these natives knew what they were talking about. And, uh, yeah, we did. Our way of life was true and, uh, and this area is a very sensitive culture area here. And uh, with this many fires, a lot of our culture resource people are spread thin. And uh, it'd be nice to be able to have a management system where we can bring on specialists in emerging situation where we can cover these areas because we can't go by the old Krober book where it said, you know, where the artifacts were 100 years ago. Those don't work no more. I mean, artifacts can be uncovered just by the wind. You know, by catastrophic fire going through, we have to redo the assessment. You know, yeah, it's a lot of it's up, you know, falls on the tribes back to get the team together, but what I'm talking about is like being able to get an archeologist or a tribal rep or a cultural monitor out in front of some of these crews doing cat lines, hand lines, just to make sure that there's not sensitive artifacts or sites what may be a power rock to some people to the Kudu people that's thousands of years shrine that we pray to there we got to protect those and we've seen them desecrated in this area and it's very important they don't happen no more and i'm not saying anybody ever done it in this room but i'm saying it's been done lots of times and you know as Kudu people and a Kudu leader i'm here to 
convey that, that very sensitive area we work here, and I appreciate all you guys' good work. And uh, thank you.